So here are the blueprints for the death chopper and the death wagon, and we're going to focus on building the death chopper first. We'll put the motor on it in this video and tune it. The bike itself, when it's complete, will have ignite left and right buttons on the handlebars and a kill gas and lamp switch on the handlebars. It'll also have a choke and it'll have the brakes and the shifters that only work for the leg drive chain because it's a uh, fixed gear system that runs to the motor. And uh, also there is, you know, just uh, your standard handlebar system aside from that, really. Now the handlebars run down to suspension and there's brakes right there. And as you can see, there's no rear suspension because you have to have a V-style frame to mount this into your uh, bike. So if you don't have a V-style frame, you won't be able to put it in there. So any soft tail bikes um, will be excluded. You need hard tail bikes. And at that, ones with a pretty wide gap in the middle. Now to help my ass and spine, we have a suspended seat. That's nice. As for the engine itself, it is a 100cc 44 tooth drive system. And uh, it runs on oil mixed with gas and it is two stroke. Later down the line, I will make a very small amount of nitrous oxide run to it. I mean, I can't express the littleness of it enough to you. I don't want to blow my fucking leg off. It'll just help us haul Mason around, and it'll also help me go a little bit faster and do some dirt bike stuff. Peak American engineering. I know it's gonna fucking glow up. Why am I- Anyway, there's a heat sink up here on the top of the motor, and then there is the exhaust right here on the bottom of the motor, and I might mod that eventually so it's loud and stinky because, you know, it's the death chopper, not the- Hummer chopper. Running from the motor to the rear, you can see there is a 44 tooth sprocket that goes on the rear wheel and that runs a drive chain over to the motor and then the motor drives it that way and since the gear right here on the cassette is passive and whenever you're, you know, like using uh, your bike and you keep your uh, pedals straight, they don't keep going, that's because your cassette or whatever gear you have that drives the back of your bike will sit there and click backwards whenever you're moving forward. If it didn't click backwards whenever you're moving forward, your pedals would go the same way. And the same science applies to this drive motor right here. Your pedals will stay perfectly still. Uh, but they will have a little bit of a push on them, though not significant. And eventually down the line, I will fix a generator to this bike right here. And the generator will give me power for a headlamp charging my phone and the battery management system will be right here. And uh, it'll also give me power for a blinker system in the rear. But right now we're just focused on getting the bike and the gas kit. And it also gets about 150 miles per gallon, though that might be reduced by the larger wheel size than they recommend. And also the uh, generators and all the stuff that's hooked up to the wheel. But for now, before I add all that stuff, I will be getting 150 miles per gallon. But you can't even fit a gallon in this thing, but you can fit 0.5 gallons in it. That's two liters for you fuckheads over in UK. I'm just kidding. I like to joke around just the same as you guys joke around about us. We really deserve it, don't we? All of that bullshit aside, uh, the 0.5 gallon gas tank can still take you probably about 70, 60 miles on average. So that's pretty nice. The whole bike itself will run maybe 20 to 30 miles per hour, depending on how happy it is on one day. Now we're going to be hauling Mason's ass in this thing, so it needs to be engineered pretty fucking good. This is the death wagon. The death wagon is made out of a standard metal wagon that goes on the back of your uh, bike, and it has some, you know, the same material that you make signs out of, uh, walls, and it's been weatherproofed slightly, though it's not rainproof, and uh, there are speakers in the side that play music and hook up to an amp, and there's also a power pack. I'm going to put all of this in one box so that, um, it doesn't fry itself and it's harder for it to fry. I didn't think about that when designing it. But yeah, this one also has a generator that's on the side of it. If we look at this blueprint, you can see there's that generator on the death wagon. It fixes to part of that metal frame on that uh, wagon that comes included. But there's also that same design on the front. So we have to cut that part so that whenever you make this here bar come out, you can go into there, sit on this little couch cushion looking thing and then close the bar on you. There's also a floorboard that runs forward because you can see the death wagon is a square and this will make it a rectangle so you can stretch your legs. On the back we have extended blinkers that run to a blinker connector uh, that goes to my bike and I would show you the schematic for that that you've probably already read because I didn't point it out. But um, 
Basically, I'm just going to reduce it to three wires, one ground and one each for positive on the blinker, because I was going to make the um, power pack on this share electricity with the bike, but that would have been too complicated. I don't have the money for that right now. I might never do that. I'm kind of an idiot. But uh, yeah, it's basically like an entertainment center that runs off of my hotspot, and he watches videos on it and uses uh, the big old speakers on the side while we're going wherever we're going. And it has its own power management system, and it's pretty cool. Now, both the bike and the uh, death wagon will have their battery management systems charge off of alternating current if you want them to, but I don't know why you wouldn't just use the generator because that would be quicker anyway. All right, I was going to put generator switches on the front of the bike, uh, one generator switch on the bike, one generator switch right here on the death wagon eventually so that you would flick it and then resistance would come up from the motor and you would be able to go a little bit faster and get better fuel efficiency. So if you're like fully charged and you don't need to use it anymore to prevent the uh, motors from creating drag all of a sudden and making it all weird, you can go ahead and turn it off. So uh, yeah, um, I'm going to pick up the bike tomorrow and I'm going to order the engine tomorrow and we're going to go ahead and see how this goes. Oh my god, it's going to be so fucking cool. Here's the actual kit itself. You can see the muffler, the engine, some things to fix it to your bike. Look, I can be this guy, I can be this guy, I can be this guy too, I can even be this girl if I buy this product. And then there's the forbidden flashlight, and two more forbidden flashlights, and then a bunch of other things that you should not stick your dingling inside of, I would assume. Yeah, it looks cheap, it looks awful, but look at that. He's got a motor on his bike, and then look, five seconds later, this motherfucker was moving around. Whoa, look at him go! Here is the doo-doo ass bike. Um, it's a Huffy. Everybody in the mountain biking community agrees that you should do some trails over by the, uh, the Grand Canyon with this thing. It's pretty good at that. You definitely won't die or anything. It, it's, it's guaranteed you'll survive that. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, there's a Shimano gear shifting system, which isn't that bad. I like them, kind of. And then there's the whatever that is, and then the wide frame, like I mentioned. That's pretty nice. The motor will sit right there. And then here's the base for the death wagon. There's that part that I said I would have to cut off. As you can see, it's a very metallic looking thing for something you'd strap on the back of a bicycle. It weighs a ton, and on top of that, it's built tough, which is good for my purpose. Now, um, the only issue is going to be how much the bike can pull. I might need to pedal assist it. Here is something that I hope to never look behind me and see whenever using the death wagon. And this emotional video of why you should buy it. Whoa, I feel it. We gonna pick it up right now. The bike, it's mine. Okay, so when I, I'm glad I got out of work because the very second I got here, there was somebody else picking up the second to last one. They had one left. Picked it up just in the nick of time. There's a kid throwing a fucking fit. Not even all the way home. Your tire fucking exploded. Awesome. I guess I need to get one with meteor tires. I'm glad that tire blew out because for the same price we got a Schwinn Sidewinder and this thing will hit 35 no problem. That's weird. Also, for a hundred bucks, you don't have twisting shifters, you have actual real shifters. So yeah, I'm glad that other bike broke. Here we go, we're gonna hit 30 for the hell of it. Let's go. I can't hit it here, I have to be going downhill, but that's probably about 18 to 20 miles per hour right there. Now, this, I don't know about, because we need 11 inches up here. Um, hmm. We'll see. So yeah, I was riding the Rock Creek bike home, and after airing up the tires, and you know, making sure it had a little bit of give just like this, I came off of a curb, BOOM! That tire exploded. Didn't even start leaking air slowly, just fucking blew up. It echoed for about three seconds and went hundreds of miles, I'm sure. But this is a blessing in disguise, because I was able to come back and get the Schwinn Sidewinder for the exact same price, $106. And you can see, look at that give in the front suspension. It may not be a hydraulic suspension, but it's definitely high end. That's how much it traveled while I was going home. Whoa, that's a lot of travel. 
And I did see somebody put an 80cc motor inside of a Schwinn Sidewinder. I was worried about this clearance, but apparently we're good. And it has dual disc brakes. I might need to take this disc brake off for the sprocket. I can see it's going to interfere. And I'll swap it out for a caliper brake. But on the front, we'll be able to keep the disc brake. But for now, it's a dual disc brake monster. And on top of all of that, for that price, seat not hard. One of the biggest complaints about that uh, bike that I had before was seat hard. Anyway, up here we have another premium feature. Actual push lock shifters. You don't have to use the crappy turn shifters. All for $100. I would assume a bike like this would cost you at least $300. I mean, from Walmart, they're pretty stingy with prices. And it's got, I think, an extra speed on the cassette uh, compared to the other one. And it shifts much smoother. And it'll hit 35 miles per hour on flat road if you push it. That is insane. Going from that other bike to this one, felt like I was riding in an intergalactic space mobile compared to a fucking shopping cart. And it's green, which, if you don't know, is my favorite color. Um, I don't put green on my YouTube channel, though. I put blue on it because it's a more inviting color that people will want to see. Green will attack your eyes, especially coming from a screen. Peace. I'm gonna go see Mason. Okay, so about nine miles in, and it's clicking and squeaking. But, I mean, it's a Walmart bike. It's doing better than every other one I've ever bought from there. Damn, bro. Your tire looks a little, eh. I better get a little bit more air in that thing eventually. As a matter of fact, disc brake is squeaking. I'm good. After rigorous testing and abusing the hell out of the bike, it still looks perfect. And that's fine by me. I mean, that's more than can be said about most Walmart bikes, you know? Well, I was picking up some uh, bolts and stuff for the bike this morning. Let's go! Damn it, I'm going uphill. But it's still going pretty fast. I mean, for a bike. Time to show you basically the only thing this thing is good for. Massive downhill bombing. Which is weird because it's a hardtail. It should be an uphill bike. Golly! Oh, we're going fucking fast! Holy shit! Look at it go! Holy crap! There it goes. That's the bombing. That's how fucking fast it can go. Whizzing by. How much this costed? Not 10, not 15, five. Battery is not included, I'll be at five fucking dollars. Even before I fixed the rear propeller, I was like, five dollars? I like to see this thing fly around aimlessly for that much money. It's more fun than I've ever gotten for five dollars, to be honest. Eh. It's infrared controlled, that's a huge drawback. We helicopter, we ow! My hand is bleeding from when it hit me a minute ago. Damn it! There it goes again. Damn! Yeah, sometimes it'll just run away from you like that and then drop like a lead bird. Do a bunch of turning. <laughs> Look at me go. Oh! Oh! oh. It keeps trying to attack me. Nice. Turns off the oil for it's like 20 bucks though.
So, it's built and it works. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with gas and test it. Now, it is a bit tough to get pedaling, but that's probably just because it doesn't have any gas in it. Here we are at the gas station. Somebody said, you gonna put gas in that thing? I said, hell yeah, he said, hell yeah. There's that choke. It's complete, man. The Impossible Made Possible Schwinn Sidewinder 2022 with a gas tank fixed to it. Mild modifications, but we're about to go fast. Careful. I'm careful. Whoa, hey, here, here, it's, it's running. Okay. Oh God, it spilled, is that okay? That's how they made the original Harleys. I don't know where your funnel went. I'm losing that in a YouTube video because it was funny. We tried pushing the bike along, Dad did, and uh, nothing. My hands smell like gas. I got my first gas, and um, it's evaporating, so the memories will be had inside my head because I didn't film it, but, it will run once we get that, uh, once we get that uh, chain, the chain fixed up. And when the chain is fixed up, it will start to sputter to life. I blew enough spokes off to make the wheel give up. So the master link exploded off of it. Can you tell which one of these is made out of a pin and a chain that was broken and then joined back together? Honestly, I could say I forgot. That would explain why this is getting eaten by the spokes over and over again. Now we've got just a bit more tension on that. Try and move it up forward. I mean, it, it's wanting to grind up against the tire. And... It's running! It's fucking running! Gas bike! Gas bike! Gas bike! Yes, bike! Well, oh, that didn't sound good. Well, that was fun. Yeah, ooh, here we go! We're going now. Oh, we're going, we're going. She's running! She's fucking running, man! Yeah, I admire my beauty! Well, I guess I'm just gonna call it here for today. You can see there's that throttle. Um, it does not have that bypass system that allows you to get up to speed with the pedals. I don't know why, but I guess it's okay. And then there's your gas tank, which I have filled with gas. The pedals, your Magneto, what a funny name. And then your, uh, whatever that thing is, uh, exhaust, your engine, and uh, the idler, and the sprocket that's fixed onto the second wheel in a row I've destroyed. Good lord. Anyway, I'm going to have to call it here for the video. Uh, you got to see it running pretty well, I guess, so that's all that really matters. So, um, I'll continue this video project later, but for now, I just want to get it out there. And, uh, yeah... The death chopper is almost complete, but it's still giving me some issues like knocking over this way and not obeying the redneck mount I made that's only on one side. But eventually I will get it refined. But for now, the very basic idea of the death chopper is there. And uh, yeah, that's 
the only thing I was going to do in this video, so I guess in the next one I'll add some electronics and shit. So yeah, uh, peace.